What an incredible gift it is to be alive at this moment in time. To receive this beautiful gift of life upon this planet, to walk upon this earth with air to breathe and water to drink. For the songs of the birds. Our trees, our forests, our lakes, our rivers, our oceans, our waterfalls, the relationships we get to have, the experiences, this great gift of life upon this planet. And this beautiful floating ball of earth and air and fire and water in our cosmos. The perfect planet to sustain life, not too close to the sun to burn, not too far to freeze, at the perfect distance where even the slightest tilt of its axis will change the temperatures and the weather and create our seasons. This incredible planet with the mix of gases and combination of gases to create our atmosphere, which is like a bubble of protection for us from outer space. And the perfect combination of gases to create oxygen that we can breathe to be able to survive on this planet this incredible earth that has the capacity, the bounty and the generosity to offer our food and our nourishment. The earth that holds the seeds and with the rain that falls from the sky grows our fruits and vegetables, our nuts, our greens, our medicines, our trees. Our trees with their roots in the ground and their branches in the air reminding us that we too are that connection between earth and sky. The trees that are our cool shade under the hot sun and the warmth by a fire at night that transform and transmute the smoke and the pollution and the carbon dioxide that we spew into the air and the leaves that take that in and breathe out oxygen for us to breathe. When we cut down our forests, when we burn our forests, we are burning the lungs of this planet that create and filter the air that we breathe, that create our ecosystems, that bring the wind and the clouds and the waters and the rains to different areas to fertilize the earth and grow life that sustains upon this planet, a sustainable life upon this planet. Why is that so hard for people to understand? We are on the perfect planet. We were put here for a reason or else we wouldn't be here. There is no other planet. There is no planet B. If there was in another solar system, it would probably already have life on it as we are here. And there are no colonies on Mars and on the moon. There's no air on Mars or the moon. There is no water, there is no nature, there is no food. There is no atmosphere to protect us from outer space. It can be too hot and too cold. We are on the perfect planet and so save what we have. It's not too late. It has taken a full stop of humanity upon this planet to make us realize, to go inside and reassess how we've been living here. This is our giant wake up call. This great turning that has been prophesied for so long has come in a way in an unexpected way. And so it's more of a giant pause than a great turning, but it is allowing ourselves the time to re-envision and to create a new humanity. When we return to life, not as normal, because normal wasn't good for this planet, normal was destroying this planet, to a new normal, the earth is calling. The earth is calling and we are here to listen right now. There uh, was an indigenous elder many years ago on these sacred lands 
who once said that anything that we do to this web of life we do to ourselves. It is that simple. And to not waste this opportunity we've been given. To understand that each and every one of us plays a role, plays a part, has a gift, has a talent. To be an ally for those who have no voice. And so to stand up when there is an injustice that is happening. To march in the marches, to sign the petitions, to do your share because there are people on the front lines losing their lives, sacrificing their lives to wake us up. And if you have this privilege, this simple privilege of simply being alive, but if you have extra privilege, a gender privilege, a race privilege, a wealth privilege, then to use that privilege to be a greater ally than you have been up until now. And so we owe it to future generations to do this work. This is our reality and this is ours to help clean the mess that we've made. And when we do our own personal healing, when we do our collective healing, when we do our ancestral healing, we help heal the seven generations behind us and the seven generations in front. And so to never feel that we are too small and can't do enough. Everyone does their share. Nothing is too small, nothing is too big. And when we all do our share, it's like a drop in a pond that ripples outwards and connects us to everyone and everything. Gratitude to the winged ones in the sky for their songs each and every day and to remind us how to look at everything from the higher perspective. To pull back out and see the greater picture of things because the earth is calling right now. We have been asked as humanity to stop and to take a look at this planet and to take a look at how we are living upon this planet, to reassess humanity's impact upon this earth because we are off balance and we are polluting and destroying and poisoning our rivers, our air, our earth, destroying other species and their habitats. And we are blind. We are blind in our intelligence and in our incredible creativity of what we can create on this planet. We have been blinded to see the impact that we have had. This earth cannot sustain humanity in the way that we've been living upon it any longer. Gratitude to the four-legged creatures of this earth for when they walk on all fours, their hearts are closest to this earth and they can best feel the heartbeat of this planet, this planet that has a rhythm and they know how to live in harmony and balance upon it. When we were babies, we could remember this when we crawled upon this earth, but when we stood up to two feet, we distanced our hearts from this planet and we need to remember how to live in harmony and balance upon it to understand that we are just atoms of this planet. We are just one part in this giant web of life. That we are all interconnected with this delicate balance. We need to maintain this delicate balance. This symbiosis, this perfect symbiosis. Together upon this planet, all beings, all elements. To have the deep humility and vulnerability to understand that we need to live in harmony and balance upon this planet, that we need this planet to survive. This planet doesn't need us to survive. This planet will survive and has survived all of the mass extinctions up until now. But if we want humanity, to remain a part of humanity and other species to remain a part of this planet, then this is our moment in time. And these are urgent times. These times have been prophesied of a great turning, a great change happening in humanity to a more just society. And we were born for these times. We were made for these times. We are the tip of the arrow of our entire ancestral lineage going back to the beginning of time. 
We are the reality of their dreaming. And we are here for a reason. To do our share, to do our part. Because if we are going to survive on this planet, it depends on a change, an immediate change right here, right now. We don't have a hundred years. We don't have 50 years. We don't even have 25. Finally, scientists have caught up to what indigenous peoples and elders have been saying for years now. We were dealing with, we were trying to deal with climate crisis before this coronavirus came in. We still have a climate crisis and we are going to have one that needs to be addressed because an old way of living is dying. Some call it a patriarchy. Some call it a consumer-driven, materialistic society that is crumbling down right before our very eyes because it has not worked. To heal the wounds of colonialism that destroyed races and cultures across this planet and still exists a racism that still exists in so many parts of this planet to stand up for truth and justice, to defend and be allies for those who have no voice, who are given no voice in our world, in our societies. Our women who are being abused and raped and murdered at a rate that is unacceptable on this planet, half the population of this planet, a misogyny that is unacceptable. It's like a bird that needs two wings to fly. And if one is broken and injured, the bird will only fly around in a circle. Imagine a world where the wisdom of women is welcomed, is honored, is listened to. Imagine two genders, all genders, walking together, sharing their wisdom, what kind of planet this would be. Children's rights. The rights of all races upon this planet, and especially in countries where genocide and slavery has all but wiped out an entire race of peoples that are still here fighting for their rights, to be an ally, for those that have no voice at all, for the air, for the waters, for the trees, for the forests. And so these are the times, and it's not too late. This full stop for humanity with this coronavirus is a gift for us. Prayers for those who have lost their lives, deep healing for their family and friends, to see this as a sacrifice to wake up a humanity that was off course, was off balance. To take this opportunity to envision a new society, a new humanity, to reassess how we've been living up until now and to create new economic systems, new political systems with renewable sources of energy to clean up the mess that we have made. Health and healthcare systems for all, just social and welfare systems of equality and equanimity for all people, for all races, for all genders, for all religions, for all beings upon this planet the earth, the air, the waters, the other species. To do, to do our own personal healing. While we are still in a pause mode here, to take a look at oneself. Who am I? Where have I come from? Where am I going? Why am I here? To understand that individual healing is collective healing. And we don't have forever to do this. And there are some communities that are still 
having to heal ancestral wounds. Collective trauma. And so for those who have the privilege, extra privilege, because simple privilege of being alive and air to breathe and to be here and receive this gift of life, we all have, but some have an extra privilege. And so to be an ally for others who are not given the same opportunities, who are not given the same privilege, who are still suffering from a system that does not treat all humans as equals and who certainly does not treat the earth and other species and we are all in this together. There is no one who is gonna get out ahead of the other. When there is no air to breathe, there is no air to breathe for everyone. When there is no water to drink, no one will be bottling water for someone else who will pay a bar of gold or a hundred bar of gold if they themselves don't have water to drink. When there is no food, healthy food for us to eat, there is a prophecy from the indigenous peoples of this land that says, when the last river has been poisoned, when the last tree has been cut down, when the last fish has been caught, only then will you realize that you can't eat money. Why is it so hard for people to understand that we are only one part in this giant web of life? We are all interconnected and we all need one another, the earth, the waters, the air, the bees and the insects that pollinate our flowers that are our food and our fruits and our vegetables. We are so intelligent to create machines and objects and fly people to the moon and to create these technologies that allow us to see one another from a across the planet and talk to one another and little machines in our hands, phones and computers with all of this information and we create the beauty of art and literature and music. And yet we can't see and understand the simple truth that we need to live in harmony and balance on this planet. That up until now we have been destroying and polluting and poisoning our earth, our planet, what we need to survive and what other species need to survive. And it's not too late. It's not too late. This coronavirus has shown us that in a very few months of a full stop of humanity, albeit full stop, no cars, no planes, no factories, people in their homes, that we have actually seen the earth can regenerate itself. The waters are cleaner, the air is cleaner, the ozone hole in the sky has gotten smaller, that there is wildlife returning to the cities. And so it's not too late. And so there are no more excuses of, there's nothing we can do, we can't change it anyhow, we've seen that it does. And so now, action, clear visions, clear visions for a new humanity, a better humanity, a kinder, more loving humanity upon this planet, where we all do our share, we all do our part. Because when everyone does their share, then no one has to carry too heavy a load. And when we all do our share, then we are stronger together and we become a wave, a revolution of people who want a better humanity upon this planet, who recognize that our existence and survival depends on the health of this planet, of its waters, of its earth, and of all other species. And we all have a responsibility because with the privilege we have to be alive to receive this gift of life comes a responsibility and responsibility is not a heavy weight it is not a weight upon our shoulder it is simply the words the ability to respond and the ability to respond to the times are that we need everyone right now we need everybody standing up and doing their share to bring your gifts your talents your wisdom to bring our technology and our science and our money and our heart and our spirits to create this new humanity, to envision this new humanity. And there are souls coming down right now. There are beings who are here to help, who know what they're getting into. And so all we have to do as humanity is clean up the mess that we've made to establish new systems 
new life system. Because the earth is calling and it is giving us this warning right now. This incredible coronavirus, this little, little virus that has stopped humanity in its tracks. There is this incredible quote from the Matrix movie, the first one long ago, that describes humans as a virus upon this planet. What other entity will come to a place, will destroy, cut down, and destroy and take everything, all the resources in the area and multiply and multiply and expand and destroy their environment and then pick up and move to another and do the same. And in the quote, humans are described as a virus upon this planet. So how ironic that a tiny little virus stopped the possibility that we were a virus, we are a virus upon this planet. You were born for these times. We were born for these times. We were all born for these times. And so this is the moment to stand up and speak up for truth and justice, to do your share, to be an ally. Gratitude to the earth defenders and the water protectors and the air protectors and the forest guardians. Gratitude to our indigenous peoples who still hold a wisdom and a knowledge of how to live in harmony and balance upon this planet who are still fighting for their land, their rights to exist. Gratitude for those sacrificing their lives to wake up this planet. Because this earth is the greatest gift. This planet is the greatest gift that we have been given. This is our home. And we have the capacity to heal, to change and to evolve. This is our moment. As someone I heard recently say, life in the service of life. Life in the service of others. The gratitude for the incredible gift that we've been given each and every day to be here, to be alive on this planet and the responsibility to offer this to future generations. I have hope and I have faith in humanity that we can turn this around because as quickly as it has gone downhill, as quickly it can come back up. When we all focus our energies, there is no doubt that we will be handing down this planet to our future generations to come for the continued survival of humanity upon this planet Gratitude for this greatest gift that we've been given. The opportunity to be here at this moment in time, in this body, in this incarnation, to receive the gift of life upon this planet. The earth is calling.